We are all committed to equality and acceptance for everyone, whoever you are and whomever you love. There are still those that will tell you that being LGBT plus and a Tory is somehow incompatible. Well, looking around the room tonight, we can see that is blatantly untrue. <laughs> sexual orientation or your gender identity to determine your politics is now as logical as saying as your height or your hair colour should. Many of you here tonight have helped play a part in the journey our party has taken on gay rights and we can now say with huge pride that it was a conservative Prime Minister who delivered equal marriage of England and Wales. And I want you all to know that we now have a Prime Minister who is completely committed to protecting those gains Good. and yeah. extending them further. <laughs> King was over there. Um, as a backbencher, Boris broke the whip to vote in favour of repealing Section 28. As Mayor of London, he supported same-sex marriage. As Foreign Secretary, he lifted the ban on British embassies abroad, flying the Pride flag. And as Prime Minister, he has appointed the great Nick Herbert as the UK's first special envoy on LGBT plus rights. And last, year, and last year extended same sex marriage to Northern Ireland. Boris also wanted me to remind you that as mayor, he led the Pride Parade wearing a rather fetching pink Stetson, which I think we should encourage him to do again. But more seriously, the government he leads is banning conversion therapy rolling out PrEP on the NHS in England as part of its mission to eliminate HIV transmission and restoring medals to veterans who had them stripped from them for being lesbian or gay. But for all the progress we have made as a society, we know there is still a long way to go. The LGBT plus community still faces stigma, harassment and discrimination, with hate crime still a fact of life. I heard myself from the victim of such a crime at the Pride reception we held in Downing Street earlier this year, and I have to say I was moved to tears. Around the world, being LGBT plus is still a crime in 71 countries. In 11 countries, it is punishable by death, just because of who you love. None of this is acceptable, obviously, and it is up to all of us to stand up and say so as loudly as we can. And that is why it is so important that the UK will be hosting its first ever global conference of LGBT plus rights next year. So whether it's about ending prejudice at home or abroad, LGBT plus conservatives champion all these issues. So please keep doing what you're doing. But also, please keep doing something else as well. Because groups like this don't just exist to campaign. They also provide a support network for their members. Every LGBT plus person must go on their own journey of self-acceptance, and that, I can imagine, is not always easy. There will be some people here tonight who are out to their friends, but maybe not to their family, or to their family, but not their work colleagues. There might be some people here who are not out to anyone, or questioning who they are. Wherever you are in your journey, I can assure you, you are among friends here. So thank you, LBG Conservatives, for everything you do. I know how hard you and your team work, Eleanor, and I hope you all have a brilliant evening and a wonderful conference, and I hope to see some of you on the dance floor. Okay.